Good evening, folks. Welcome back to Eminem Weekly. And now for today's movie review. This has, has easily been one of the most anticipated movies of this year. And to explain why, we need to go back at least a decade to a 2004 movie called Finding Nemo. Back in, back in Pixar was still in, in, in its early stages of, of getting a lot of traction and pumping out good movies. There was a movie uh, released in that year called Finding Nemo. Directed by, the, by one of Pixar's most brilliant directors, Andrew Stanton, it was basically uh, a movie that no one anticipated would be this good. It was a movie about um, um, sea life in Australia. It was about a young fish named Nemo who wanted to escape his over overprotective father's clutches. And on his first day of school, he, get, he ends up getting ca captured by a group of divers who kidnap him and take him to an aquarium at a dentist's office in Australia. Now, leaving his overprotective father, Marlin, to, to track him down, and along the way, he, he gets help from a forgetful blue tang named Dory, who, who has short term memory loss, which means she can't remember most of anything that happens to her. And along the way, uh, Marlin meets a group of uh, people who help him on his way. On his way. When this movie c came out, people didn't know what to expect, and when it, but when it came out, critics were, were wonderful by it, and fans and audiences were, were just as equally blown away. Not only was the film a breath of fresh air in terms of its animation, but it also had several other big, biggest strengths, including terrific voice work from Ellen DeGeneres, Alan, Albert Brooks, and, and Alexandra Gold, its lead actors, as well as, well as Willem Dafoe, with Jeffrey Rush, and, and several other actors, including Vicki Lewis. But what, but what made the, the the film succeeded as well as it did was, was not only its relatability, but also um, its clever comedy, its breathtaking animation, and especially its emotional resonance with those who saw it. To this day, the film, the film has grossed nearly a billion dollars worldwide. It's, um, it, it's dubbed one of Pixar's classics alongside films like the Toy Story franchise and just recently Inside Out. But also, um, it also remains one of Pixar's biggest films to this day. Fast forward several years later. Um, and out of nowhere, Pixar announced a sequel to this film. And by the way, Finding Nemo is one of Marvel's best films, and if you ever want to see it, I cannot recommend this film highly enough. Go check it out, it is fantastic. But fast forward several years, and, and out of nowhere, Pixar released a sequel to Finding Nemo. Originally, the film was announced um, a, a few, at least two years ago, it was called Finding Dory. Apparently, the film will be a sequel to Finding Nemo, at least a year later, and it will focus on Dory as she as she goes on a mission to find her family, whom she whom she lost several years ago, and has been trying to, um, for several years, especially during the events of Finding Nemo, to find. And honestly, I actually was looking forward to this film um, film with mixed at best expectations. Like granted, I love Finding Nemo, and I especially love Dory. She's one of the most Pixar's most iconic characters. However, side characters um, don't really have exactly a good reputation of carrying a movie um, that stands on them, especially when they don't have the same level of personality or motivation or drive drive like like the main characters from the, from their previous film had. Look at how other characters I don't even I can't name some other side characters at this time, but some of them try to get solo films or even sequel films focused on them. But because they don't have the same drive, motivation, or relatability, or even likability, that the, the movie suffers, and it can never uh, match up to the original. But then again, most people most, most people fail to even match up to the original films that they, they were sequ sequels to. By the way, aside those reservations, I dove into Finding Nemo, into Finding Nemo, and, and swam and swam in the deep. So what did I get? Well, guys, if you can tell by my expression, guys. This is honestly one of the best animated films I've seen this year, if not one of the best. Man, man, I thought Kung Fu Panda was a great sequel to, to this um, um, to the first two films, but after seeing Finding Nemo, I see find, Finding Nemo and comparing this to Finding Dory, um, it, it's still just as good as the original is. Granted, it doesn't surpass the original at all, and I'll get to it later. However, a lot of the things that we would like about Finding Nemo are still here in this film. It makes the film so so great. Uh, great. Not just the return of Ellen DeGeneres' story, but also the inclusion of new characters that hold up, hold up very well in comparison to the, to the characters of Finding Nemo, as well as the nostalgia factor. It's still there. It, it's still compelling, and it's still just as enjoyable, if not better. So yeah, this film... Really good. It may, not, it may not exceed the original in any terms, but still amazing, and I cannot recommend you go and see it right now. But in order to get, but in order to explain all this, let's let's go back into what made the original so well. And I can sum it up in one word: resonance. 
essence. The story was very well written, the humor, uh, the humor was clever and, and well, well executed. Uh, I think they own the generous, of course. And, and much of the scenes had much of the scenes ha have had some kind of impact to it, whether it be dramatic or emotional, or even tear-jerking for that moment. And, and what's best is that the characters were well fleshed out, it was made so relatable. relatable. Uh, yeah, even though they could seem conventional to the opening eye, there was something deep and motivation, motivational inside them that made you want to care for them, especially Dory. Dory. And that's, what, and that's some of the reasons why Finding Nemo is such a Pixar classic and still holds up to this day. Um, hey, and much, as far as Finding, Finding Dory goes, well, I can't say I can't say this. They definitely set up a few things from the original film, like especially with, especially in terms of the story, the humor, and especially some great new characters. I will, I'll get to those characters in a moment. But first things first, we need to talk about this film's biggest strength, and that is the animation and the direction. And like I said, guys, Andrew Stanton is obvious. And there's a reason why Andrew Stanton is one of Pixar's br most brilliant minds. And this film, as well as Finding Nemo, are two are two true testaments as to his work. The animation here is gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Not to, not, not, not to mention the water, the water scenes, the underwater scenes are so well executed. And it, it, it doesn't even feel like you're actually looking at, uh, feel like so cartoonish or so, or so over the over the top cartoony. It still feels like you're actually under the water. It's that realistic, and they pull it off so well. Even the attention to detail is amazing, like the algae, the the anemones, the, uh, everything about the sea life, it's still there, it's so compelling, and Andrew Stanton knocked it out of the park again. Andrew Stanton and Annie Amish to Pixar, congrats, um, uh, you deserve all the props in the world. Great job. Job. And now, let's talk. Now, and, and now this gets a little tricky, the next part, tricky part we get to covering is the writing. Like I said, maybe the best aspect, um, um, Finding Nemo uh, uh, exceeded well for having a very well written script that, that fleshed out its characters, had some had some clever and well written humor to it, especially drove the story forward and not having a single dull moment moment as it went along, and it kept fans engaged in the entire the entire journey. It's all just into quirky characters that even though they didn't play much of a purpose, they still were funny and and, 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 their, and their appearances were, um, were all all the more worth it. And in this film, we definitely do get plethora of new characters, such as a whale shark named um, named Destiny, played by uh, uh, Caitlin Olsen, um, a, cr a cantankerous octopus named Hank, played by Ed O'Neill, and one of my favorite new characters, uh, characters, um, uh, a, a humpback whale, played by Ty Burrell. I don't know his name, but he was hilarious. If you, if you guys haven't seen Ty Burrell, if you guys like Ty Burrell's work on Modern Family, you'll love him in this film, because he just blows me away, hands down. Uh, and, and honestly, however, I do have to point out, there are uh, a few, uh, I do have to point out uh, one thing in the script is that, and this is actually one of my, the elephant in the room stuff from this film, is that, in compare, what some can't can pale, pale in comparison to the original is that, like I said at the beginning, the film doesn't have the same um, heft, same amount of emotional or even dramatic impact that the first one held so well. There isn't a, um, there isn't really um, much of a tearjerker scene in this film. Yeah, sure, there's gonna be some. Uh, there's gonna be a lot of heartfelt scenes. that's gonna tug at the heartstrings and uh, strings. You can uh, you can't escape those. However, it doesn't it doesn't really it doesn't really have any moments that kind of hit you hit you right there. The same way you might might say for like the Toy Story movies or especially Inside Out. It doesn't really have that kind of, those kinds of films. But but the film is just so good that you can't overlook it. But it just this little nitpick I have. It's kind of hard to miss, but. But really, that's one of the biggest nitpick I can have for this film, considering how uh, the film is so fast-paced and doesn't really and, and doesn't drag at all. It actually keep actually keeps things moving and, and really funny. That's amazing. And last but not least, guys, we have got to talk about the voice work. And really, I don't know know what I don't even know where to start. The biggest compliment I can give this film is Ellen DeGeneres. Guys. This is a perfect example of when um, an anime character and a, and, and a great actress meet together, meet together, and, and they just work magic together. Ellen DeGeneres is Dory. That's it. No one, they should not, they should not ever replace her, ever. She is Dory in real life. She is Dory on screen. Um, Ellen DeGeneres is Dory. This in the same way that Owen Wilson is Mandy McQueen, and be, like Wolverine, like Wolverine is Hugh Jackman, and vice versa. 
I don't know, guys. Don't, I don't know, Jarvis. I may have seen many films, but for this, maybe for this film, you knocked it out of the park. Well done. Well done. Well done. Also, the other voice character is Ed O'Neill. You are, you are great. Great. Ty Burrell, Caitlin Nelson were fantastic. Even Albert Brooks and uh, Albert Brooks and the kid played play Nemo. They were actually just the same. Well done. It, voice work is very top notch. Uh, I do kind of wish, like, like I said, I do kind of. I do kind of wish that we said we could have some more emotional in, or dramatic impact to kind of to kind of match up the original a little bit, but honestly, I don't really find out me missed all that much. So yeah, great job. So so in the end, guys, man, I thought I thought Pix I thought Pixar will take a tumble with this film, especially considering how high the standards for Finding Nemo were. But this film proved me wrong and all that. Like I said, it doesn't have the same dramatic or emotional impact as the first one does, but uh, that's really a nitpick. In, uh, but that's really a nitpick in, uh, in this film that has such great clever comedy, great care, great new characters, a great story that keeps us entertained. Entertained. Uh, the characters are still compelling and still fresh, and yet it's still entertaining all the same. And even if you, even if you don't have seen the original, you don't need to. This film, this film has it still still has a sense of nostalgia, so that you don't. You, can, you feel like you haven't missed anything. But if you don't want to like, see the original film, go ahead. I don't mind. However, if you see, if you want to, if, if you've been looking for an opportunity to see this film, you need to see it now. I'm serious. This film, this film, so damn great. I'm giving this film an 8.5 out of 10 and a big recommendation. Folks, folks, um, under the sea, there are many wonders. Um, one of them is the fish, the fish, um, the, the sea life. It is a lot. There's a lot of that to be seen, and this film reminds us reminds us of that while still um, while still being a great movie. So if you guys haven't, so if you guys ha um um don't have a reason yet, put on your snorkel, dive in, and get ready for an adventure you will not forget. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. Um, if you want if you want if you want to see more, come uh, um, please share this video, like and subscribe, and, and you'll stay tuned for more. Also, um, also, um, just a reminder, I would like to get to 50 subscribers at the end of this film, and I would like to get this, my videos up to a thousand views if you can help me. I would appreciate that, guys, so much. Thanks for, thanks a lot. It, thanks a lot. There's not much more I can say. Uh, if you want to check me out on Facebook, or Facebook, go right ahead. My link is down below, as is, as is my Twitter. Um, please go ahead and, and leave me a tweet or follow me, and I will be all the more grateful. Until then... I'm Moss Butler, you're watching Game Night Weekly, and I will see you next time.